You have been here for a few weeks and you have faced a lot, right? Yes, that's right. Do you have any expectations from here before come, uh, coming to this country? Well, people told me that uh, you either like or you love India or you hate it and there is nothing in between. And I had Googled uh, things already, so I had some expectations. But anyway, it was different than I expected it to be. Uh, were the expectations in a good way or in a bad way? Um, what I thought was that people would be more welcoming to uh, foreign people uh, because they don't see them that much. Uh, and that's why I thought that they would be interested in, in what you could tell them about it or something like it. But yeah, that was a bit different than uh, I expected it to be. What do you see in the videos? Do you think the reality is there? No, not quite, because what people show in videos is a positive uh, side of um, India or Kolkata, that's what I uh, look at. Um, so you have your expectations quite high and think that it, that it will be nice to be here and, and relaxing in a way. Um, but you have to be constantly on your guard. Um, because of what people say, think, or uh, they talk about you and point, and you feel it. They don't say it directly to me, but um, as if you know people, then you also know what, what is going on behind your back. And yeah, that that was shocking. When did you start to have a bad feeling of how they do? Um, on my first day here, that I really noticed that people were, were looking and talking about me and all these things. And then when I really started feeling bad about it, that was that at some point it was just too much. Um, when people also started behaving in a in a in a way that in well in my country would be regarded as very disrespectful and unmannered, like jumping in a queue and it was not one person who did so there were three people and then i exploded inside so yeah you were saying that the people were talking about you but did you have a feeling that the, it was a, a positive that the, i mean like they were talking good things about you or it was like that they were talking something like a abusive stuff that you it can harm hurt you hurt your feelings well, it was not positive at, at all, um, that I know. I can't understand what they say, of course, uh, because of the language. Um, but when you see that people are looking at each other and then all together looking at you and back again and, and laugh, then it is not positive because it, it could indeed, like you say, also be that, um, that people are fascinated by something they don't know and then they may smile at you and try to, to find some connection with you like some children they do that um, that i have noticed and that was a positive thing children are more curious in a way so they they want to sit next to you and make some noises to to focus their attention uh, uh, to, to try to get your attention and, and that i actually like um, but from adult people i i never expected it that they could treat me like air or talk about me and not with me, that, that was really shocking. So that was not a positive thing at all, no. How you were welcomed here on the first day? Um, on my very first day, someone was waiting at the, at the airport um, and then I felt... So it was from the Five Star Hotel? Yes, they were from the Five Star okay, Hotel. Um, yes. No, from the... I'm not, I'm not talking about them, the Five Star Hotel. They, they are, you know, uh, educated in that way, yes, yes, but yes. I'm saying like, uh, how you were welcomed uh, by the you know, citizens of India, like the, by the normal people? Mm, by the normal people, yeah. Well, my first encounter, I, I would like to mention that, was uh, on the airport in Delhi, mm. um, where I really had the feeling that um, um, they, they, the people from the hotel who picked me up uh, at the gate in the mm. airport, I had the feeling that they, they only try to be friendly like, because you pay them to mm -hmm. be. But it was not genuine at all. 
um, and that may be a, a signal of how people can be doing. I'm not sure about that, um, but the people in the streets here were only staring and and my clothes are maybe different and my hairstyle is different from what people use, usually wear here. So they looked at me like I was an alien, literally. And uh, the smiles and all. They yeah, laughing. they are laughing, yes, indeed. Um, and I'm not used to that because in my country I can walk around anonymously and when people look at me, they, they acknowledge that they have seen me, they smile at me, sometimes they talk to me. And here that was no nothing of that. It, it felt hostile in a way. Like, okay. Did you feel like uh, to be accepted by the people over here, you need to be like them? And like you cannot have a different kind of uh, attitude or different kind of you know, uh, uh, belief? Yeah, I think it is uh, uh, most of all the way I look. Um, I dress differently, my hairstyle is different. They can see that I'm not from this area. I'm, <laughs> I'm taller than they are. Um, and all that makes it the, that if you walk somewhere people will notice you um, and they start talking and pointing and, and all, all sorts such things so i think it is right when you say that that if you just blend in and are nearly invisible or like them then people will accept you but if it is just a little bit different uh, of what they are used to just a little bit different just uh, i mean that it can be just a little bit different and it can ruin the thing it could well be, yes, yes, because I think that India is a country with a lot of traditions. People have expectations of how someone has to behave or dress or act and all these things to be part of the society. And if it is not like they expect it to be, then they will talk. Mm -hmm. That's my impression. <clears throat> Did you feel I guided you and bypassed you or told you uh, or that what to do when there was when there are any kind of sense of danger yes you did that very well actually um, so i have always felt safe in, uh, with you near me um, even if it is when i walk in a different on the wrong side of the street because that's what i used to do then then you help me but also you warn me where to go when not to go i can you tell, tell me about the dangers that could, could have happened if i was not there and you, Yes, for, there was some, a point where we went to a market where um, some guy from a shop, he, he got... Can you tell me the name of the market? Um, it was a new market. It was a new market, mm -hmm. yes. Yeah. In this planet. But yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and there were all kinds of shops and, and, and all. Um, and people from shops, they were trying to, to talk me into the shop and they, they were selling some jewelry and stuff and wanted me uh, to go in. And I'm not interested in such things. Um, but one guy with a cut in his face, I, I remember, mm -hmm. um, he got some instructions, it seemed, from another group where he belonged to, uh, maybe from some shop, um, to get me in, in that shop. And it was a very uncomfortable situation where, um, where he was too persistent and he was really after me and after, yeah, you as well because you, you were with me. Um, and you noticed all of a sudden what was going on and you you guided me away from that situation i don't know what would have happened i could be naive and have followed them just to be polite or whatever i don't know um and anything could have happened maybe they robbed you they tried to grab your bag and all because and uh, when they say that i mean like that the cut on uh, i mean the, the guy who had the cut on his face mm -hmm. the, what, wasn't he told by some guys that uh, catch the bag, catch the... I yeah, mean, something uh, with blue, uh, catch the blue or... or Nila Pakar, Nila Pakar, yeah. he was um, told by the, by the groups that Nila Pakar, which means like catch the blue, yeah. and he had the blue bag. I had a blue bag. So, yeah. so when, they, you know, when he was uh, guided by that, I mean, he was told, right? He even admitted it, um, that he got instructions to, to go after, mm -hmm. after that. Um, so if it is an organized group or something, I don't know, but it could have ended really okay, and, uh, badly. So uh, when we moved away from the danger, did he laugh at us? Um, he met some, someone from that group, I think. Mm -hmm. um, so maybe they both took a different path and, and met somewhere uh, again, and then they laughed indeed, yes. Mm -hmm. yeah.
<coughs> I made you prepare before every situation so that you don't get in trouble. Do you think that uh, if I haven't done that, then things could have been different? Just yes or no? Yes sir. <laughs> yes. One day you did something on your own without me and without even telling me. Can you tell me what happened? Yes. Um, some morning I wanted to go to an ATM uh, near the hotel and it was the State Bank of India. It was an ATM from them. And there was a queue in front of it, um, quite a long one actually. So I queued up and at some point some big, well, some chubby, big chubby Indian guy, he came and he, he all of a sudden he went in front of me. So he, he jumped the queue and I decided, well, let's not say something because I don't know how we will react. And, and he looked like a strong person who you shouldn't mess with. So that's what I thought. And well, if it was only one person, let it be. But then two other people came and they did exactly the same thing. And then I thought, what is going on here if people in this country can't even behave in a civilized way? Uh, because everywhere in the world, no, everyone would know in the world that if you're in a queue, then you wait for your turn and you're not jumping the queue like that. Mm -hmm. So when that just happened a bit, it was the most normal thing and I was treated like air, then something happened inside of me. So I really said those words like, I'm going right now if uh, you people in this country can't even uh, behave in a proper way like everyone else in the world would do. And then I walked my way and he looked like, like it was a, he looked like me, <laughs> at me like a sheep would do uh, chewing grass. Like, <clears throat> it was the most normal thing. Like, what are you talking about? So I went to another bank. There it all went fine. I went on my way back to the hotel. Uh, a Punjabi guy was talking to some, some guy. And that guy was staring in a way at me when I passed by. He was really turning around uh, just to, to stare at me. And then I decided, you know what? I, I'm so fed up with this that I turned around myself uh, towards him. And then I smiled in a way like uh, I wanted to say, I know what's going on. I have seen you. I've spotted what you are doing. Mm -hmm. And then he walked after me saying some things uh, which I could not understand. And thank goodness I was near the hotel so I could uh, go through the gate because I don't know what could have happened. Or, 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 I don't know. Anything can have, could have happened to you. Yes. yes. Okay. And do you remember the incident of the British guy? Uh, who was uh, who got stuck in Delhi? Yeah. Uh, can you tell me about the incident? Yeah, it was in I think it was in October. Uh, mm -hmm. October. That happened. It was uh, during the Buddha Puja. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the festival. Yeah, the festival indeed. Um, we were walking there on the festival, and two local people, I think they were, they they spotted us. Um, <laughs> we were wearing a T-shirt saying. Amsterdam. Amsterdam and I was walking next to you so they thought that we were from abroad both of us uh, and they approached us and they explained that someone they knew was stuck in the airport in Delhi and someone had and he was from the UK he was from the UK and they had um, taken all his money for some reason they'd taken his passport as well so without a passport and money in, a, in an airport and they can't go anywhere um, but it must have been someone I, I can hardly think that it was an official who did it. Maybe it was some con man who was there. I'm not sure. But you should never give your money to someone. Mm -hmm. person and uh, the airport. thing is, that, you know, the, the couples. I mean, the the guys, uh, who, uh, you know, who approached us and asked for the help, asked for help. So I told him. Uh, I mean, like uh, I told them that you should contact the Indian embassy. So what did what did they reply? Do you remember that? No, I don't, but I don't think you should uh, contact the Indian Embassy because the Indian Embassy only does something for Indian people mm -hmm. and uh, the Embassy of Britain, they should take care of you. Okay. So if you need a new passport or office things or support, then you can only go uh, contact the Embassy of your own country, not, not the Indian, not the Indian. Uh, I, I actually, you know, uh, I told them that uh, you should contact the Embassy because, uh, and the female told me that uh, okay, and we did, and uh, the embassy is not doing nothing. Mm, that's maybe why. Because maybe that's maybe the, the Indian 
unless you will not do something for a British person at all. Do you think some sort of brainwashing goes into the society by the powerful people by this country, of this country, so that the citizens were suppressed? Yeah, I think that's going on. Um, because what I can I say, sorry, we will leave it at that time. You mean, can I tell from the from cinema? Okay, okay. Yeah, or, yeah. Mm. okay. I can just start again and I go. No, no, you just say, I mean, don't, it's oh. not Just, I don't know, I will pause for you. I will pause for you. Okay. <laughs> What really shocked me uh, was that when I was in the cinema, um, all of a sudden it said that we had to stand up to the national anthem of India. Um, and actually, I felt bad about it. Um, first of all, I'm not an Indian citizen, of course, um, but I'm not used to to this patriotic behavior of people. Um, what I don't understand is, is why should the film industry or whoever is involved um, force people to stand up in a cinema to a national anthem. You're only going there to see a movie, and and there's nothing political going on in in that building. So I I personally think that they should separate politics and and daily life. Entertainment, entertainment. Yeah, that has nothing to do with each other. So if they incorporate such stuff in it, uh, like standing up for a national anthem, then they are mixing things up. Um, and yeah. whatever, uh, what are the things that you see on the daily life? Like, uh, are there any sort of uh, brainwashing things goes on into the daily life of the on the Indian citizens? And but they think, but the people don't realize those sort of things. Do you see? Well, what I see on cars a lot here is that India is great and mm -hmm. and, and how fantastic it all is, um, and I think India could have a lot of potential. Uh, there are a lot of possibilities in this country if if people really wanted it, but saying that everything is perfect here, that's just not the way it is. There, are a lot, there is a lot of room for improvement, and by just repeating that everything is, is great here and that also uh, Calcutta is the city of joy. Do you think it's a, it has joy in the city? <laughs> mm, no. Some people may think so. Uh, they um, then, then, okay, okay. Yeah, it's it's fine. But no, it's okay. <laughs> um, you know, let's just go back to what we were saying. That um, you see the writings on the um, the cars and all. So, yeah. So uh, just go. On. Yeah, the, the writing on the on the cars. Uh, well, you, you you see a lot that India is great, um, and they also promote um, how green. Uh, Kakara should be, um, but there is no dustbin to be found at all. Um, so you can put as many signs up as you want, like uh, giving people the impression that, that they're working in a clean city. But if you don't provide dustbins, then people will throw their stuff in the streets like they used to, because they don't have any choice. Um, so a sign is not enough. You can really put as many signs up as you want. Uh, do, you feel, do you feel like that? Um... People said uh, we will do this, we will do that, but they, they don't provide the solution first. Yeah, they they show that they want to do things, but they don't think properly um, of what is needed to accomplish it. Like the transportation that uh, I was talking about the new town transit. Trans That's exactly what I mean. I mean, yes, then they build new roads. Mm -hmm. um, and all such things. And it is one of the, you know, that, uh, it is, I think, I'm, I think that Newton is considered as one of the modern part of Calcutta. Yeah. But the trans, what do you think of the transportation? Is kind of the same or, or I am wrong? No, it is exactly the same. Um, if you plan new roads and new infrastructure in a new part of the city, um, then you should know what the uses of those roads are and who they are and how they use the road. So you can make a, a three-lane new road, um, but they will be used uh, uh, by pedestrians, by cyclists, by um, rickshaws and everything. And there is no room for all that. So if you, if you don't provide bike lanes and, and things uh, in a new, play, new part of the city, then I think you have not understood what is needed to, 
organized for transportation because the queues will still happen um, because everyone is blocking the roads uh, because they, they try to be four cars in a three uh, way lane um, and with all the, the bicycles and, and all and um, yeah it's it could have been planned differently so it, it would actually work so yeah you're talking of the, the roads of the calcutta i mean the the old roads of the calcutta that you see and you transfer yeah so it's yeah. not of the new town, right? Well, it is exactly the same because the people who use the roads are the same people. Mm -hmm. um, so if you create a new uh, road in a new part mm -hmm. of the city, Newton, Newton has the lanes. They do, I haven't seen it. <laughs> Newton has the lanes. Why but, don't you use it? <laughs> <laughs> Newton has the lanes. But I see the main problem is there the traffic that, <clears throat> I mean, like the uh, public transportation. The public transportation. Oh, that's absolutely horrible. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The public transportation is extremely bad. Yeah. So there is no uh, metro ready, <laughs> and it will probably the take, still going. Yeah, it's still going on, and you see these tenders in the newspaper. And, uh, you, you have to go, no from here to just from just for one kilometer, you need to book a car. Yeah. Or you need to have a car. Yeah. Uh, there are no options, and there are, that's those you know there are only one option, which is the bus, mm -hmm. and it, it becomes. Extremely crowded. Yes, yes. <laughs> and you have to wait hours and right. Mm -hmm. Indeed. Yeah. Do you think that? Uh, do you think there are lots of things which they try to show that they are doing, but in reality they are not? Uh, just yes or no. Yes, yes. They are trying that. Yeah. Can you give just one example that you have noticed? <laughs> For one thing, that's really the feeling I have because you, you see these political signs and, and, and all. Um, so they want to show what they are all doing, but in reality, you hardly see it. Mm. Um, that you are in development or yeah, uh, yes, for example, yeah, the employment, the also, and the, the maintenance of, of existing things, mm. the poverty, yeah. <coughs> Do you think majority of people are still under slavery, which they don't realize, and which is called contemporary slavery? I would definitely call it contemporary slavery. What is going on here? If I see it from my perspective, yeah. From a okay, I forgot to mention one word. Like, uh, I mean, the majority of the people like they are doing the normal jobs, like the corporate works. You know, the every kind of works, the official official works. So, do you think those sort of works are in a contemporary slavery that um, that the big companies are doing? Actually, they are showing that this is a job, but actually this is a slavery. Yeah, when you hear that people are sleeping in offices to get their work done, uh, and they don't get their overtime uh, pay, uh, so they can have a, a job which which on paper says forty hours uh, a week, mm. but in reality they will work a lot more. Um, and they don't get that paid, then I would consider that to be uh, contemporary slavery, yes. So you think that the slavery is still available in India, right? In, I mean, the, in a modern way. In modern. a modern way, yes, indeed. So that yeah. it doesn't look like a slavery, but it yeah. actually in reality is. In a way it is, yes. Mm -hmm. yes. What they advertise about the country in the, you know, uh, like Incredible India or some sort of Indian advertisement, are they true? I mean, uh, do they show the real, actual India, the what goes inside the country? Um, no, not what they promote uh, as what the tourist boards uh, do, because then they only show the, the nice uh, things, of course, and the attractions you could visit. Um, uh, and you know, what shocked me, when I was uh, arriving, then you also always have to fill out a form in the airplane mm. uh, from the government. So you have to fill out where you will be staying, how many countries you have visited in the last six days, um, uh, your phone number and all, all these things. On that form it even says Incredible India. Mm -hmm. um, and that may not even be the purpose of your visit at all. Um, you never know what the purpose of your visit can be. Uh, but even they write Incredible India. Um, and there are so many things that people show, and I've also seen it on on YouTube, for example, um, these nice official videos where they would show the, the Taj Mahal and all these big things, 
from from the past. Uh, like yeah. the eye catching thing. Yeah, eye catching thing, and and it's the same in 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 this city. Mm -hmm. um, when I book my flight uh, and type my destination, mm -hmm. then I can see the Victoria Memorial Hall. That's the face of Calcutta, mm -hmm. and that's actually from a from a colonial past. Mm -hmm. So what they do still is something from the past, and that's that's the most beautiful thing they can show, and that's really bad actually. Thank you.